So um, I'm going to start sharing my screen now. So we can look at a sample of the assignments. So the assignment is a continuation of what I spoke on Monday on visualizing the unintended. Um, I took an example of what was given as assignments on observation one, which is purpose of sketching exercise. Um, on Monday, a quick recap of what we said. We said sketches copy reality. And we looked at how different shades and gradients and color can have a different meaning or a different presentation or, or give you more details on what we are sketching or the final redemption of what you are doing. We also discovered that sketching is to capture details that, in, like I said, the way you play with light and shadow and color and scale of proportion and gradients, all those things have their own meaning they convey. And sketch is also capture uh, real life. It's an opportunity for you to see what is in front of you, the way it is used as against the intent of the designer. He also tells you the story of what is happening in what you are sketching. So um, assignment one was talking about observation one. Um, the assignment was to select a site to sketch based on the observation we want to highlight. In this case, it's observation one. Observation one is um, purpose of sketching. So if we were to select a building, such as the one on the screen, the assignment will be to highlight that observation one. This building shows uh, various degrees of light and shadow and gradients of color, articulating some area more than others. So the assignment will be to sketch the selected building in the same way, phasing ingredients to highlight certain areas more than others or with less details. But the condition is to place a photograph of what you are sketching side by side with what uh, the, the, the photograph of the real life building side by side what you are sketching. So this is, um, actually an office building, but it was a residential building that was retrofitted into an office building. Um, the retrofit can be seen, the retrofitting can be seen um, in the way they enlarged the windows. The windows were not the sizes before, but because they want more light in, into the offices, that's what gave rise to the windows. And also the color combination they used was to team up with the particular office that was occupying that. You can see that uh, signboard where my cursor is moving. That, that is the, the, the color signature of that particular office. Um, the office is actually on a major road, which gave rise to that change in use. Like I said on Monday, um, Change in use can be sanctioned by some factors that the designer might not have considered alongside with the client. Probably the client met the designer that he needed a residential development, and this was the plot of land uh, located in so 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 area. And the designer probably went ahead and fulfilled that brief. But along the way, because of the strategic location of this particular building, the change was the use was changed to an office building because that is what we sell more at that location. And also coupled with the fact that this is on a major road, the vehicular noise from that road may not really do justice to somebody that is using this particular development as an apartment. Um, you can also see that the building is located near a gas station, which uh, brings up the question of planning regulations and authorities. This is actually a hazard, but uh, probably because those authorities 
uh, didn't consider this and the approval was given for the initial building, which was also another hazard or something happened, but this is not really what is supposed to be. And this is not the way it's supposed to have zoned. So we are actually sketching this to show what is happening as against what should have been. Coming to the picture, the sketch itself, you, you can see that uh, it's a monochromatic sketch, black and white. But um, we tried as much as we can to highlight some paint. Like you can see the pillars on this fence are red. And because it's monochromatic, we decided to shade them to give you that effect. Because looking at the monochromatic picture, like what I said as I started this particular uh, presentation of this assignment, that gradients and um, shades and color convey a different message on what you are sketching. It, it can give you too much details or less details. If you look at this picture, if this sketch was done and colors were used, it will look like what you are seeing. Because it's a monochromatic sketch, you know that it's a building and you have to get the information that is conveyed based on the amount of detail that is expressed here. Another aspect of what I spoke on Monday, you can see that this office building doesn't have any greenery. The only greenery that is this uh, row of trees in the background is outside the, the fence of this particular uh, development, which is wrong. Uh, it, 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 it brings back the question we are asking, what happened to the landscape? When we're talking about landscape and environment, this kind of particular development will have been done, um, taken into consideration that as you are developing this, we are reducing the amount of green and you are creating more problems you are, to the ozone layer, to the environment and contributing to climate change. So this will have been done, taking into consideration some elements of greenery, which have really made sense. Again, materials and uh, maintenance. We can see that um, from the wall of the gas station, you see me, uh, consciously putting some stains on those walls to signify what you can see on this side, how the paint is being washed away because of uh, run specification. These cheap paints that are obtainable, that are easily purchasable, don't do justice to these elements, the way they are used. The elements of weather like rain and sun have started making the paint to peel off which is not really nice and which was not, I can guarantee you, the intent of the designer. The designer wanted a situation whereby this would look like this for years to come. But because of um, the funds available to the developer or because of the fact that wrong materials were specified probably from the designer, this is the result of what was built. Again, um, I tried as much as possible to represent elements the way they are, even though some, like you look at this water tank overhead, water tank. In the picture itself, it is dark in color, but here I left it white. I purposely didn't want to add too much detail to some of those things so that I have, you have that bare visuals of the building itself without much emphasis on some elements like I would have done. This is just an example to show what can be done uh, when you have um, a building that is in front of you the way you want to sketch it. This was supposed to be, if you see my course, so this was supposed to be a signboard, uh, a, not a signboard, yeah, yes, a, a, a flyer that was done like a signboard on the wall, but it is torn again because of um, wrong specification. And uh, you can see it being represented here. So the goal is to represent exactly what you are seeing, what was built, how it's used as against what the designer intended. And I'm sure if uh, we could lay our hand on what the designer did, this will not be the way it is. This will have been well done and well packaged, but the way it's used, you see that is even done. It couldn't stand uh, the test of time for long. You can also see, uh, 
these conduit pipes to link the indoor unit and the outdoor unit of the air conditioning system, which I believe in the mechanical drawings we are done to follow a particular order, maybe a straight line or something or hidden. But again, what is built is not what the designer intended. You, you can see it, it, it doesn't look um, in line with the straight regular lines that we have, like the line of the roof, the line of the of the walls. We also see these electrical cables that are just um, brought into the gas station, not in an orderly manner. So this is this tells you a story of how this is used and probably the economic situation of this. Uh, that, 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 that was happening when this was built, which is far way far from what the designer had in mind or intended. You could also see below where you see my cursor on the photograph, you could also see what the rain is doing at the base of this fence wall, which again is poor material specification. If for instance, um, clay bricks were used, that is part of what we have here, the part of the natural ground that we have here, the material we have that is used to rain and weather over the years. This probably could not have happened, but even if this happened, there are easy ways to maintain it than this. This particular um, occurrence on this paint and this sanctuary block will cause you to scrape it out and look for a paint to reapply on it, which of course, incurs more costs. Now we are going to look at some of the sketches I did as far back as 2002, when I was in this university, Modibo Adama University, that was the Federal University of Technology, Yola in Adama State, Nigeria. This is a faculty building where sciences, uh, all the sciences departments, we are located. The way I play this picture here is to talk about uh, landscape and environment. I like the idea that they consciously planted an array of trees. By then, these trees we are still tender, as you can see in this picture, but I can guarantee you that by now they, they've grown up to be big trees, which um, add, uh, contribute to making this particular microclimate cooler, purifies the air, adds good leisure effects and makes this to look, to look uh, organic. Um, these elements you see where my cursor is on the ground are rocks because this Yola is located in the Northern part of Nigeria that is known to be rocky. So I, as much as possible, try to represent those rocks you can see here and there and some sands and grasses to represent what I saw. And the technique we were using then was to use our clutch pencil uh, as measurement tool or as tool to measure angles too. Where you sit, um, the distance between you are the building, you take the clutch pencil and measure a particular unit of what you want to draw and put it back on your paper and it becomes your measurement. That is the, the measurement guide, that is the the, the scaling factor you use to reproduce this, to give so everything you see here was done according to the scale of the pencil I was using. Again, like I said earlier, uh, this is not just a presentation of the building, but it also tells a story. You can see the human figures in the picture, the one where my cursor is moving on, on the left-hand side, and the one where my cursor is also on right now on the right hand side. If you look at them, you see that they have buckets, empty buckets into their, their hands. What was happening then was uh, there is a hostel, male hostel, located on the right hand side of this picture. We are, we are, we are going to, to see a component of that hostel, which I said to include here, which was supposed to be where these students, these are actually students, we're supposed to have the water they needed for their activities. But because that uh, water system was inadequate for them, they were always on a hunt for water. As you can see them, they are hunting for water and they are coming to this ground water tank 
to get the water that they need to probably take their bath or cook or something. They're always hunting for water. So that tells the story of what was happening at this particular point in time. Again, material and specification, you can see how um, untidy this wiring, and if you can follow my mouse, is to tell you that probably the electrical joints were done and all this were done to follow a pathway or other, but the way it was built is completely going against those design. Um, use versus, uh, versus in intention is also spoken of here. Another interesting thing here is the sky. You can see how the sky is appearing on this picture. I will give you the trick of how to make this sky like this. But the way the sky appears here is also an indication of the particular season in which this drawing was made. It shows a cloudy sky. So from there, you, you could actually say that, okay, when this drawing or sketch was made, it was actually a period where you have a lot of clouds in the sky, so probably the rainy season. From your sketch, you can tell a story. Somebody can look at it and understand uh, the particular time of the year it was. The greenery, you're not just sketching a structure or a scene in front of you. You are actually telling a story. Your sketch should be able to tell a story of what is going on and when it was going on. This is the water tank I was talking about. Um, again, material specification. This is an overhead water system that is made up of steel. And this water system was feeding those um, plastic water tanks we are seeing under the drawing where you see my corso. There's another ground steel tank right here. Why I'm talking about material specification is this school is located in the northern side of Nigeria that is known for its high temperature. Temperatures as high as 45 degrees, 46 degrees. As far back as 2002, when climate change was not even as, as, as severe as it is now. So having this always exposed to sun water inside will lead to easy corrosion from the inside. So contaminating the water, which means that water is not always fit to use uh, to the student that want to make use of it. Again, remember I talked about using the clutch pencil as a measuring instrument to have an accurate scale. So this particular water reservoir was inadequate to serve those male hostels. That's why in the drawing, previous drawing, you could see them scouting for water because this was always inadequate. And again, from this sketch, you can see how um, the gradient of the pencil of the uh, on the water tank is FE, so which means the attention is more on it. The background of trees was um, purposely made faint, but as you're looking at it, you can see trees, you can see electric lines running through to give you that background that, okay, there was greenery, there was this, in this particular scene, you could see these uh, amenities, but you're actually looking at the water tank itself. Then look at the sky again. So these drawings were made within the same period. So how I was able to achieve this sky was to cut pieces of paper to this particular shape. If you look at the sky itself, you see that there are common shapes you could identify around. So you take a piece of paper, cut it in this shape, and place a piece of paper uh, does cut on your drawing and now shade the piece of paper, shade over it and remove it. So once you shade and remove it, the, 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 the place you, sh you shade that we give that mark. And depending on how heavy or light your shading is, you can give it this effect. If you can look at the sketch, that some places are light, some places are thicker. You can thus represent your clouds. If you have a, a particular area and you are seeing that has more clouds, that is how you can do that. And a place that has less cloud, that is how you can do that. Again, if um, probably the people that made this design to service those hostels never intended 
for the population to grow to that particular level because definitely this design was done having into consideration the particular number of students that will be occupied those hostels. But you can see from a description that you have um, 80 rooms on those hostels and all, most times those hostels are filled to the brim. And once that happens, they put pressure on all those amenities. That is why this water is not always enough. Again, design nice intention versus practical use of whatsoever you are doing. So those are um, some of the examples I wanted to talk about. You looking at what is in front of you, drawing it the way it is, telling that story, the way it appears, um, being able to play with uh, some gradients of light and shadow. You can see those sun shading devices on those windows, how they were casting shadow on the wall. And by merely looking at it, you can see that this is actually a shadow uh, effect on the on the wall. So some of those are some of the things you could achieve. So if you went ahead and did those assignments from what is like I said, you could see you learn a lot of things from this our presentation. We are I'll also be happy to hear from you or see your own sketches so that we can have more dis discussions on them.